Hi, it's Katrina. From the most famous movies in each state to what Google thinks of you, here are 10 of the weirdest maps. You never know what you might find out. Number 10. Highest Paid Public Employees Have you ever wondered who the highest paid public employee in each state is? If you live in the United States, you might have already guessed it. Sports coaches. You might have heard that it's the football coach of the largest state school, but the truth is, sometimes it's the basketball coach. This map shows per state which position you should aim for if you want to be a coach yourself. And as you can see, there are only 13 states where the highest paid public employee isn't in a sporting role, while 27 see football coaches in the top position, and 13 spots are held by basketball coaches. This doesn't mean, however, that these coaches are being paid from taxpayer dollars. In most cases, their basic salaries are enhanced by additional compensation packages that are paid out of the revenues that the teams generate, media appearances, endorsement deals, and fundraising. In the United States, sports pays. Number 9. Area Codes of Ludacris's Women In 2001, Ludacris released the song Area Codes, which was originally a part of the soundtrack to Rush Hour 2 and also featured in a scene from The Fast and the Furious. In it, he talks about the area codes of the US in which he's had liaisons with various women, and this map shows where all of those places were. In total, he mentions 43 different area codes, ranging from Atlanta and Washington to Dallas and LA, and as you can see, he seems to have a preference for East Coast states over Central or Western ones. His favorite states are Florida and Texas, with four mentions of each, and he even had time to build relations in Hawaii. Number 8. The Modern Pangaea Map Between about 335 and 175 million years ago, all the land on Earth was combined into a supercontinent known as Pangaea. It subsequently broke apart to become the continents that we know today, and this map shows how all of the modern-day countries were combined together. Here you can see how the U.S. was once attached to Africa and much closer to South America, while Canada and Alaska were combined with Greenland and Russia. The most surprising difference is how the lower parts of Europe were shaped, and the way that Antarctica fits neatly between India, Africa, and Australia. Number 7. U.S. English Word Map These next maps show how the use of English for particular words and phrases is different across the United States. First, how do you address a group of two or more people? There's a clear divide between the north and west of the country who say you guys, and the southeast where they say y'all. What do you say? This next map shows how people refer to carbonated drinks. The blue regions are where people call it pop, the red regions where people call it soda, and the green areas are where people say coke. Next up is the way people refer to this creature. What do you call it? Let me know in the comments below. This map shows one of the most varied differences across the U.S., where there are at least four different responses when people are asked what the little gray creature is called that rolls up into a ball when you touch it. The red areas are where they're called roly-poly bugs, the green areas are where people call them potato bugs, the blue areas call them pill bugs, and the yellow areas had no idea what the thing was. Finally, what is it called when you're driving down the road and reach an intersection that's a circle, where you have to go around it and exit at a certain point? The colors on this map show the different terms used, and they vary wildly across the country. The red regions call this a traffic circle, the blue areas call it a roundabout, the yellow areas refer to it as a rotary, and the states in green don't have a specific word for it. Number 6. Most Famous Movie Set in Each State Wherever you live in the world, it's hard not to enjoy watching a movie that's set where you live, where you recognize the landmarks and streets around you. This next map shows the most famous movie that's been set in each state in America, based on how prevalent the state is in each movie, how much of it was filmed there, and how successful the movie was at the box office. Some are exactly as you'd expect, such as Pearl Harbor for Hawaii, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for Texas, Raising Arizona for Arizona, and The Wizard of Oz in Kansas. Others, though, are less obvious, with The Hangover being the most famous one set in Nevada, Jumanji in New Hampshire, Dawn of the Dead in Wisconsin, and American Pie in Michigan. Of course, these aren't the only movies that were competing for the top spot in each state. Which ones do you think should have been included? Number 5. Most Commonly Spoken Language English and Spanish are, of course, the most commonly spoken languages in the U.S., but which languages do you think are most spoken after those two? This next map shows by state what's top after English and Spanish have been removed from the mix, 
and there are some that are quite surprising. 16 states now have German next in line, 11 have French, 4 have Vietnamese, with Italian, Korean, and Portuguese being top in two states each. Tagalog is big in California, Nevada, and Hawaii, Navajo in Arizona and New Mexico, and Dakota in South Dakota. Russian is the third most spoken language in Oregon, Chinese in New York, and Arabic in Michigan. Rounding off the list is Polish in Illinois and French Creole, which is the third most spoken language in Florida. Number four, the U.S. State Autocomplete Map. Have you ever played the game with Google where you type in the beginning of a phrase and see how it autocompletes? Well, this map shows the U.S. states by the word that Google suggests when you type in, why is this state so... As you can imagine, some are predictable, some are stereotypical, and some are kind of rude. California and Florida, according to Google, are crazy. Texas is hot, Oklahoma is humid, and Kansas is flat. Two states, Alaska and Ohio, are haunted. North Carolina is backwards, Louisiana is corrupt, and Illinois is broke. While Oregon is smoky, Montana is big, Idaho is boring, and Pennsylvania is just weird. A political bias shows up too, with Minnesota being auto-completed as Democratic, Nebraska as Republican, and Washington State as liberal. Finally, Hawaii is, according to Google, expensive, New York is dirty, Connecticut is ghetto, and Maine is creepy. Does this fit with your experience of each of these states? Let me know in the comments below. Number three, redheads in Europe. Red hair is naturally occurring in about 2% of the human population, but is more common in people with northern or northwestern European ancestry, a statistic that is backed up by this map of Europe that shows the frequency of red hair across Europe. By far, the highest proportions can be found in the Celtic nations of Scotland, Ireland, and Wales, where more than 10% of people have ginger locks, while it's also more common than the global average in England, Iceland, Norway, and for some reason, the Volga region of Russia, which is only second in the rankings to Ireland. As you get further south through Europe, red hair becomes increasingly rare, and in Italy, it's lower than the worldwide average at about 0.57%. People emigrating from Europe has meant that red-headed people can be found across the world, but in lower numbers. With between 2 and 6% of the population having red hair, the USA has the most residents with red hair. Recent estimates calculate about 18 million Americans. The reason for this clear divide is thought to be due to sun exposure, with Southern Europeans much more likely to have dark hair. A similar map, which shows blonde hair across Europe, has a similar distribution to the red hair one, with as much as 80% of the population of Sweden having fair hair. Number two, time zones in Antarctica. As you move across America, there are six different time zones, which can play havoc with your body if you're journeying from Hawaii to the East Coast. But spare a thought for people visiting Antarctica, where they have to deal with 11 different time zones. Sitting at the bottom of the world, every line of longitude passes through the continent, so in theory, every one of the world's timelines goes through. But that's not how time is divided up here. Instead, it's based on the various territorial claims made by other countries. Because days and nights work differently here, with months of light followed by months of total darkness, it makes sense that the various laboratories and facilities follow the same time as the country which they are aligned with, or at least with their supply base. McMurdo Station, for example, is an American outpost that uses New Zealand time because that's where all of their provisions come from. The olive green region is the furthest behind, being six hours behind coordinated universal time, while the pink region next to it is 13 hours ahead of UTC, which means you could walk a few feet across the border and have to change your watch by 19 hours. The red region around the center is unclaimed and actually has no official time zone at all, so it takes the default position of being the same as UTC. Number one, literal translations of country names. Every country has its own name, but what do they actually mean? This final series of maps shows every country in the world and the literal meaning of their names. Starting with Africa, many of the names tell the story of the continent, its indigenous people, local cultures, and how colonists came from the rest of the world. Controversially, Ethiopia means land of burnt faces from the Greek, and Sudan means country of the blacks from the Arabic. Malawi means land of flames in reference to the ancient tradition of burning grass to prepare the land for cultivation, and Senegal means our canoe, thought to be a result of a miscommunication between the original Portuguese visitors and local fishermen. Moving to Europe, there's France, which means the land of the fierce from the German. Norway means northern way after a Viking sea route, and Spain means land of many rabbits. 
In North America, Canada means the village, Mexico means in the navel of the moon, and the USA translates to mean United States of Amerigo. Further south, Brazil translates as red like an ember, Argentina is land beside the silvery river, and Venezuela means little Venice. Finally, in Asia, there's China, which means the center kingdom, Kazakhstan, which means place where one stands, Qatar, the land of tar, and Iraq, which means beside the water. Oh, and let's not forget Australia, the southern land, and New Zealand, the land of the long white cloud. Thanks for watching. Which fun fact was your favorite? Let us all know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe before you leave, and I'll see you soon. Bye!